1976 saw the introduction of the two umpire system in an effort to enable the men in white to keep up with the increasing tempo of the game. Although there was some early confusion, the move developed into a successful one. One of the most memorable matches of the season was between North Melbourne and Carlton in the 10th round. The brilliant Malcolm Blight kicked three goals for the Roos in time on and he had the ball at least 60 metres from goal when the siren sounded with his team trailing by a point. No one gave him a chance, but he unleashed one of the longest kicks for goal and a jubilant North team flocked to carry its hero from the ground. There were plenty of fireworks during the year and St Gilda's Robert Muir featured in many of them. The fiery saint was a gifted footballer, but he struggled to harness his fiery temperament and during his chequered career, Muir was a regular visitor to VFL House. Come grand final time, and it was North Melbourne and Hawthorne for the second year in a row. Apart from desperately wanting to make amends for the shocking performance they put up in the 75 grand final, there was a tragic reason the Hawks wanted to crush the ruse. Their skipper, Peter Crimmins, was gravely ill with cancer, and every player in the brown and gold dedicated themselves to win the match for their little mate. John Kennedy's charges lived up to their promise, and on September the 28th, three days after the grand final, Crimmins lost his fight for life. Here's a chance now for Crimmins. Zona to Mark has been paid to Peter Hudson. We'll wait on the result of this. Punched away by Rollins, picked up by Crimmins. Crimmins going for the left foot, and there's Hudson all by himself. I one out towards Crimmins and Roden, and Crimmins takes the mark, lays on straight away, and left foots it for a goal. VFL Park lit up on May 17 of the 1977 season and one of the all-time greats, Royce Hart, called it a day two months later after a magnificent career with the Tigers which spanned a decade. Carlton's normally unflappable Bruce Dool lost his call in this match against Hawthorne but he didn't have to pay the price of Collingwood's Phil Carman who clocked Hawk Michael Tuck in the second semi-final and the subsequent two-week suspension caused him to miss the grand final. For the first time, the grand final was telecast live and more than one million people watched as the Magpies built up a commanding lead by three-quarter time. The difference at the last break was almost five goals, and Collingwood, which the year before had won the wooden spoon, looked set for an easy win. But the Roos kicked 5-7 to 1-4 in the breathtaking final term, and when the siren sounded, scores were locked together, and the stunned players slumped to the ground in disbelief. A week later it was all north and Ron Barassi's team led at every change to inflict yet another heartbreaking defeat upon the long-suffering Magpie Army. The early part of the 1978 season was marred by constant sniping by St Kilda and Essendon players and legal action ensued after players from both sides hit the deck. On July the 1st, Footscray kicked a record score of 33 goals, 15, 213 points, with Kelvin Templeton booting 15 goals, the most number kicked by a player for a decade. There were plenty of memorable bumps during the season, but there was no question that this one, in which Keith Gregg was shirt-fronted by Geelong's Ray Card, was the best of the year. Carlton's Percy Jones provided some of the most light-hearted moments of 78, and Peter Crackers, Keenan, took the award for the punch of the year, but my back hurts. This indiscretion against Hawk Don Scott cost Keenan a place in the grand final team. The Roos and Hawthorne met for the third time in four years in the grand final. The Hawks, through Moncrief, booted two goals in the opening minutes, but in the second quarter, North bounced back and led by four points at half-time after Baker kicked four goals in just 20 minutes. North then moved two goals clear early in the third quarter, but the Hawks, inspired by Captain Scott, answered the challenge to boot seven goals in the term, then put the nail in the ruse coffin by adding another four in the last quarter to win by three goals and give former player David Parkin his first premiership as a coach. It's time for a